Island, live and local, with your host, Tom Shalero on 1039 LI News Radio. And once again, welcome back as we're moving right along, heading to the two o'clock hour. It's going to be a fun segment, folks. A uh, good friend of our program, uh, Lou Savello, uh, who is right now the uh, second VP of the Suffolk County PBA. But uh, good things are happening very, very shortly. We're going to be talking to Lou about the changing of the guard. And I, I want to say this on a personal note. Uh, the uh, the PBA, the Suffolk County PBA, has been such a strong, strong supporter of our midday program here, Your Island with Tom Shalero, that uh, I'm always being deep gratitude for it. But that's also reflective on the number of people that call in on our show every day. We get a lot of you folks calling in and opining about the issues and uh, the support that you have for our men and women in, in, in blue. So I think all of that uh, puts it together and makes a nice marriage, so to speak. But let's say hello to Lou. Lou, changing of the guard. What's going on, second VP? Yes, sir. Tom, thank you. And let, let me start by thanking you um, because you are one of our biggest supporters and certainly thanking your audience yeah, because they are some of our most fierce defenders. So uh, thank you both very much for your support over the years. And uh, we continue. Uh, we look forward to continuing to supporting the show because you guys are the absolute best. You know, again, we appreciate that. And uh, But I've always said this right from the start, and it's all part of, and again, what the PBA has done uh, to put the publicity out there and so on so people know exactly what, what our offices do. And uh, I always bring up, uh, I'm always reading amazing things. Somebody drives off a pier and goes into the Forge River, or they wrote, uh, there was an incident also in Patchwork. And our, our men and women, they just come, and they come in the police cars, and they jump in the water. And it doesn't matter if it's January, and it's doesn't matter if it's June or anything like that. And and I think that's so important that we talk about that and, and we put that in perspective because you don't know the listening audience. That could be your mom or your dad or your son who somehow went astray and ended up in the water and so on. I mean, I, I think that's important that we put that out there. Yeah, absolutely. The bravery, um, the selflessness, the heroism of our members never ceases to amaze me. And they're out there, Tom, doing this every day, sacrificing to protect every one of us. All right. So good things happening with the Suffolk County PBA. Change in the God, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what's happening. Changing, changing of the God, so to speak. Yeah, exciting. So our president, Noel DiGirolamo, yeah. and our first vice president, Lou Tutone, are about to retire simultaneously. And uh, it's very exciting because uh, I will be fulfilling the rest of their term as, as well as uh, my board coming up with me. We're very excited to uh, continue the great work that they have done. And let me tell you, when it comes to labor leaders, they are second to none. Yeah. They've done some tremendous work, Tom, over the years. When they came into the positions that they currently hold, it was a tumultuous time for law enforcement here in Suffolk County. We had unions pitted against unions. Mm -hmm. We had law enforcement being yeah. used as a political pawn, as yeah. a political football. And uh, the highways had been stripped away from us. Our great highway patrol had been taken away. We were without a contract. We had all sorts of issues. And that's when they took the helm of the Suffolk County PBA, when Noel became president. And if you look forward now, to what they've been able to accomplish, um, it's nothing short of incredible. We I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was where, you know, those were tough times. And it wasn't just for the the members of the service, but it was also for the for the residents. You know, there was that going on. There was the unsureness of who's going to come to a car accident on the LIE and so on. And that was all political nonsense that took place at the time. I think it was the current county executive or whatever uh, didn't like this or didn't like that. And politics shouldn't play a role uh, in. Uh, and, and I think the the way in which we think about ourselves and our residents and also in, in our police department and so on. So uh, those were tough times. Those were tough times. They, they were, right? You know, I think Steve Levy was the original defund the police guy because he was <laughs> the guy that was trying to dismantle the Suffolk County Police Department. He had started with the Highway Patrol Bureau, but he had his eyes on Marine Bureau, our aviation unit. He was looking to uh, save a few dollars, I guess, and completely dismantle the Suffolk County Police and that's sort of when um, the current union, uh, the current iteration of the union board came into their positions. And, you know, they, they, they sort of took the fight to them. They, you know, took the, the fight to the court of public opinion. And today our highway patrol is restored. We don't have that divisiveness between us and some of the other law enforcement unions that are out there. They built coalitions. They built bridges, um, not only with uh, the other unions, but with the public and with uh, some of the people in office to, to be able to work collaboratively um, to restore our department to what it was, to be able to keep people here in Suffolk County safe. And like I said, I can't uh, overstate the great work that they have done, uh, both Noel and Lou, 
in their leadership positions in yeah. the Suffolk County PBA. Again, and I, I know them both, and I have to agree. I couldn't agree more. Uh, particularly what I hear from the feedback. People always say, you know, I was in a pretty bad accident on the LIE, but the cops were there in like 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's what people want to see. They want to see that those first responders. They want to see our police. And uh, we've got to that point. And, and based on a uh, political obfuscation, so to speak, well, we're going to do this and we're going to switch that bad policy. And, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's up to everybody, including the PBA, the labor arm of it, how, however you want to say it, uh, to, to get involved in that and so on. So um, uh, you're slated. You're going to be taking over as the, as the president. And uh, it's almost like... I don't want to say this, but is it a tough act to follow? It is. I mean, the bar, the bar is certainly uh, set high, and that, that's a good thing. But uh, I look forward uh, to meeting the challenge. So yeah. does the board coming up behind me. I think, you know, they, they have done such great things, but there's certainly more work to do uh, as far as law enforcement here in Suffolk County. I think we're one of the, the rare professions where, I mean, you, when you look at professions over a period of time and you... You talk to people who have retired from a particular profession, usually with things like innovation, things like technology, you know, you know, the jobs get easier, right? Like we don't, um, we're not out there, um, you know, uh, breaking bricks with a hammer anymore. We have machines that do some of these things in, in the trades. And with police, with policing and law enforcement in general, as, as things change, the job tends to get harder. I think, you know, mm. Um, our younger people coming up have it more difficult. When I talk to some of the retirees, they're the ones that tell me, I don't know how you guys do the job today. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. you know, with what you're facing with the demonization, mm -hmm. with the, the politics of it, with the, the fact that everything you do is recorded now on body cam. You have a bad day, it's on body cam. You know, say something negative about your boss, it's on body mm -hmm. cam. Um, split second decision, it's on body. You know, it, where else do you see that? The NFL, where we go back and look at the, uh, the instant replay yeah. to see if you did something wrong or right. So the police officers that are starting out now are um, at a, a tremendous disadvantage. Cell phones have changed the whole way. Yeah. We police, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. got a cell phone, everyone's calling 911, the, the, the call volume yeah. has spiked through the roof. So the job has gotten more difficult. When I tell you, Tom, uh, you know, and here's an indicator, and it's not just us here uh, in, on Long Island, but the whole country, you know, they've made policing so difficult that people don't want the job anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're facing nationally. Here in Suffolk, you know, we used to get about 35,000, 40,000 people. That. We take our test, our last test, 12, you know, just over 12, I think, somewhere around 12,000. Yeah. So you're talking about, what, a two-thirds, right? Two-thirds drop in people even interested in our test. We used to be one of the most sought-after police jobs in the country, and we're seeing wow. a precipitous drop in the people that actually want the job. And I think it, it's because, you know, policing in many ways, myself included, coming from a police family, you know, your, your kids and your nieces and your nephews, they're the ones that are coming up behind you admiring dad or uncle or their aunt and taking these jobs. And now I, I talk to my friends that are, that are up in years and have kids going into college and they're telling their children, do anything else. Wow. Right. Do do anything else. Do not go into the law enforcement profession because, you know, the politicians certainly don't have your back. Right. Um, the job, uh, if you're lucky enough uh, to make it out of this job alive and with your sanity, um, mm. you know, they're not going to have your back. And uh, th we're seeing that across the country. And everyone, if you take a look at like Newsday, um, you would think that every Suffolk County cop is, is a millionaire, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I with not the case. Yeah. You know, we are, our, our young people are starting at just over $40,000 yeah. to take this job and risk their lives. Yeah. So uh, it's a difficult job, and uh, there are challenges ahead that we need to meet. Yeah. I, I want to say that because that's what a lot of people say, oh, the, the pay and everything like that. But I challenge anybody mm -hmm. listening right now, uh, check out your property taxes. Check out the county budget. Mm -hmm. Check out that. We're getting a pretty good deal in our towns. We're getting a pretty good deal in our counties. It's obviously that 70% of your property tax bill is going to your local school district. And we talk about that on our Albany report all the time on how to better way to fund our schools. But our police department, and I'm going to say this, folks, and I'm fair and balance is a good deal. I'm going to have to say we get a good deal for what we get. When you get a response time of three, three and a half, four minutes on, on a, uh, a priority one call uh, because there's 
life and death or there's injury involved and so on, or you need help because there's somebody in your backyard at three o'clock in the morning and you don't know what's going on. They're right there. And and this is what we pay for. Uh, your, your property values are based on crime rates. So you go to sell your house because you want to move to Florida and then somebody from some other state or some part of the county looks at the uh, the crime rate in your community and finds out, well, it's, it's a pretty low crime area. Why do you think that is? You know, a lot of people don't put two and two together. I wish our legislators would put two and mm-hmm. two together, you know, when it, when it comes to that. So uh, I think all of this is something that we should consider, uh, particularly when it comes to home values and uh, particularly when it comes down to the value that we get in our police, which I will then say again, People here in Suffolk County like the cops. And, you know, again, I think that's that's a big part uh, of, uh, of, of what uh, I think our objectives will be in the future, how the education that we t- that we put out there. But going back to the the uh, the role, the particular role of a police union, a, a PBA, it's not just about the contracts. It's about it's a lot of public education mm-hmm. and so on. Give us an idea of your vision now for the future. Sure. And, and, you know, I can hearken back again to uh, my predecessors who did so much great work. It it certainly goes well beyond just negotiating for salaries or benefits. Mm -hmm. Uh, The police union role is a a public safety advocate. I Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're one of the few that are out there advocating for public safety. So if you take a look at the police reform, for instance, where there were all sorts of, you know, calls, you know, from the lunatic fringe to dismantle the police departments, demilitarize the police departments. Like, what is, wait, de- demilitarize? <laughs> like, you want to take my gun away? Like, the only thing that stands between well, me and a graveyard? Yeah. Um, insanity. And from some of what occurred across the state and what you could have had, where they were trying to completely do away with police officers, not have us uh, do traffic stops, um, you know, we, we ended up with a rational... Uh, police policy here, and that's because the union was actively involved exactly. in that. Exactly. Um, you know, we came out with body cameras and a few other changes that were rational uh, compromises. You know, between some of the people calling for changes and, and the law enforcement professionals who have a mission to enforce the law and prevent crime. So the police union role um, goes well, well beyond that negotiating and is is, uh, more of a public safety advocate overall, not just for our law enforcement officers, but also for the public in general. And I want to underscore that fact because uh, it, it is more than just what, what you're talking about. It is putting out this, and I'm a, a firm believer in public education. And I think one of the reasons why, as you pointed out before, that the number of young people uh, taking the test has gone down nationwide. It's not just here in Suffolk County. I think a lot of it has to do for a multitude of reasons, and a lot of it has to do for bad publicity that's coming from outside the county. And that's where I think uh, we need to underscore that fact because you don't see it here. You really don't see that negativity that you see in other areas of the country. You have a few lunatics, yes, uh, and I, I've seen them address the county legislature or the state legislatures upstate and so on, which is another issue, too, is it's dealing with. And one of the things, and I'll have your comment on this, that there was a time where the police department organizations, police organizations were not allowed to be involved in politics. And now it's something that's very important right now, because that's what I think uh, that brings in that public education and also keeps our elected officials on their toes. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of stuff coming out of Albany that's absolutely disgusting, particularly when it comes to policing. But locally here, I think it's important in terms of being involved in politics, because you can't you can't separate the world. You can't say, oh, that's politics. It's it's all part of governing. Mm-hmm. It's all part of policing and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, six days away, very much involved. Yep, very, very much involved. And, and there are those, Tom, like a, a certain legislator here in Suffolk County, that would make second-class citizens out of police officers. You would abridge our rights mm-hmm. to participate in the political process. Um, you know, I think w- one of the laws that they were trying to pass even had to spell out that, oh, we'll still let you vote. You can still vote. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that, that's the, um, yeah. the outlook they have on yeah. it. It's imperative that police officers uh, and all citizens participate in the political process, that they vote, that they stay involved in government. We all have a stake. Our, our slogan now uh, for the Suffolk County PBA is your neighbors protecting your neighborhood. Because, you know, mm. most of us here, I like that. we live here, right? We, we, we are your neighbors. You know, we have a stake in what happens out here. Our children are growing up here and going to the schools. 
So I challenge anyone to say that we shouldn't participate in the political process. I think we should be concerned with what's going on in our schools, our school boards, right up to the county executive, because the people who hold those offices has major effects on our professional life as police officers, but also on our life as Suffolk County residents. And most of my members are Suffolk County residents. And how many elected officials would there be if, let's say, those rules still stay, the antiquated rules, oh, police can't get involved in this, they can't get involved in that, as organizations, as fraternal organizations, however you want to describe it. How many, uh, how much policy would be worse off now than we are, particularly when it comes to Albany? And I think it's so important. A person runs for public office, they have to represent the community. What is part of that community? Public safety. And where is that going to fit in into your legislative agenda? And without at least... I'll call it a screening by those that are on the front lines, i.e. the police, whether it's the fraternal police organizations, I'm talking nationally, or the local PBAs, or however you want to say it. It's all part of that. And uh, that's why there's got to be a staunch uh, advocate of that. Look what we did see happen, uh, the, uh, the elimination of 50A. Mm-hmm. You know, again, that came through that whole defund period that came through that 50A being uh, the right of a police officer to keep their uh, their backgrounds and their their personal records secret. Uh, there was there's no reason for that to be out in the public agenda. We're seeing people now making all sorts of threats against uh, uh, having to do with the, the war in the Mideast and so on. These threats also t- uh, took place against police officers. We've seen a judge uh, whose information was put out uh, because they they didn't have that protection in 50A in the state of new jersey and a psycho went to the house and shot and killed the judge's son so this is how we need to restore or get back areas like 50a agenda as far as what we're calling talking about certainly you know I, i've had um criminals come to the homes of my members right wow. somebody that that you know you arrested shows up at your house and that's because you remove this protection this vital protection that's meant to not only protect the police officer but to protect the police officer's spouse protect the police officers kids Um, it was shameful that they took it away and that's just one example of the terrible legislation like bail reform Uh who who are the only ones screaming about bail reform it's the police unions to say hey this is a reckless law that it's going to get people hurt it's going to and it has gotten people hurt it's gotten people killed right but where we've been the only counterbalance to that to push back to say you need to change this you need to amend this we need rational laws Um, so if you had these laws that said, hey, police unions can't do this and police officers can't be involved in politics, that voice would be silenced. And there is that movement to silence our voice, to snuff out that voice, that public safety advocate, that role that unions, police unions play. Yeah. And, you know, well said, because I think there are things that still have to be addressed as we get to 2024. I wish the fight was over. I wish everything was great, uh, because we have subsided just a little bit in the post-COVID period, the post-George uh, Floyd period and so on, when people were so misguided, politicians across this country were so misguided on what they were doing. And then all of a sudden, these far-left politicians that hated the police, you, you, where they stand now? was pretty incredible well they never admitted but we were wrong we need a safer seattle or we need a safer portland or san francisco and some of these cities that were turned upside down and and i only say thank goodness that we have what we have here in in, in suffolk county and uh, for that whole realization of what is necessary uh to make this this uh, a great place to live mm, absolutely and, and we're trying to build coalitions tom you know, getting back to what i want to do in the future is to work with other police unions across this country. We've joined an organization named UCOPS, uh, which has various police unions from across the country, and we're coming together to advocate for our police officers and our law enforcement community to have, uh, you know, a national standard, national police bill of rights, um, some certain rights that we can advocate for together because there was this national movement to dismantle, defund, and do away with the police. So having that um, you know, coalition from across the country is something I plan to work on in the future, and hopefully we'll keep your audience apprised of that. We can send them to the website and to the social media so you can see what we're up to on a national level.
Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people are interested. I know I'm getting some text messages and things like that, too. And people find it very refreshing uh, that uh, we have what we have, this whole suburban nature of Suffolk County. And we have a police department, I think, uh, your words, that we're also your neighbors. We're also citizens. And I think ne- never to forget that. 30 seconds left, final thoughts. But we're going to be having you on, folks. You're going to hear Lou Savello quite a bit on this program on uh, some of the great things that are happening here. But I'll give you some final thoughts. As the incoming president of the Suffolk County PBA. So I, I just like to reiterate my uh, thanks and my gratitude to both our president, Noel DiGirolamo, and our first vice president, Lou Tutone. I'd like to wish them well in their retirement on behalf of everything they've done, not only for our members, but for the people of Suffolk County. Thank you. Okay. Once again, Lou Savello, uh, incoming president of the Suffolk County PBA. I'm your host, Tom Chilero, two o'clock hours upon us. Everybody have a good day, safe day, happy day. We will see you all tomorrow. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it, New York, 